Hello and good evening. My name is John and we are playing Root Double Before Crime After Days Extended Edition. Because that's the name of this game. Uh, I have no idea what this game is because it's part of my Steam Cleaning series where I go through every game in my Steam library eventually and then arbitrarily rate and review them without any information whatsoever. I, I don't know what this is. I think the title is ridiculous so I'm going to say it's a sh Japanese shmup. Nine souls are trapped in the Larbo in Larbo. They attempt to escape the facility in the face of that hopeless situation. However, reality sneers at those struggling to survive. At the limit of fatigue and anxiety and death living over, their, some, over them, something lurks in their hearts. Is it courage to never give up, or can they cleave a path to the future with their own hands? Well, I'm going to take this one. Wow, there's a lot of endings. Okay, maybe this is a visual novel. Cut it off. They will be herded together like prisoners bound in a dungeon. They will be shut up in prison and be punished after many days. The Old Testament, Isaiah 24 22. That's too loud. The roar echoed through the laboratory at daybreak. This is definitely a visual novel. As if it were a, a bell heralding the end. That's a vibrator on my controller there. No sound this time. What? What was that sound? I don't know. It came from Area 1. Find out what happened. Now! Wait. We can't. The gate can't be open during the application. The amplification. Intense tremors detected in B1 Area 1. The roars didn't stop there. Intense tremors detected in B2 Area 3. Loud noises and violent shaking continue to echo through the facility. Oh no! Fire! A fire has broken out in B1, Area 2. Followed immediately by shockwaves and the sounds of screaming. Immense Trevors detected in B2, Area 2. No! Security has shifted to activation mode. All gates bearing those leading it to Area N have been opened. There wasn't a soul in that place who yet understood what had happened here. A clear voice echoed amongst all the confusion and cacophony. This is an emergency broadcast. Explosions of unknown origins have just occurred within the facility. That voice that, an that announced the destruction was but a fragment of the truth. September 16th, 2030, 619 AM, at the 6th Laboratory of Atomic and Biological Organization, a scientific research facility located in the outskirts of Rokumuni City. An explosion occurred. Security has been shifted to evacuation mode. All gates bearing those leaving the area have been open. All personnel, please calmly evacuate to the surface. The automatic PA screamed out warnings that fit ahead of the broken. It was an accident that shouldn't have been impossible. The sprinkler system's not working. Why? Damn it, hurry up with the personal, evac personnel evacuation. Everyone had begun ranting. Ranting madly? Caught up in the chaos around the emergency staircases have collapsed! All the elevators are offline too! There's no way out! Impossible! How did this happen? 
Uh, anyway, we need to get out of here. Hurry! But then a calm voice rose as to the quell the pandemonium. Calm down, people. Professor! Have you forgotten that we have a system that immediately notifies the fire department in emergencies like this? Help should be here in just a few minutes. Only a few minutes? How is that possible? These guys aren't your run of the mill firefighters. They're the special elite rescue squad, Sirius. Our city's finest rescue squad. Filled with the best of the best of the best. Rescue squad arrives at the scene. Captain, all members of the team A present and accounted for. Oh, no. A row of rescue workers wearing protective suits stood before a man guard in the same outfit. I know it's a man. Excellent. Listen up, people. Countless people are trapped in the lab as we speak. And due to the nature of the facility, there will be no ordinary dispatch. Tip. We don't know what happened here, nor what unforeseen circumstances await us. Female rescue worker 2. Huh? A young woman who appeared fairly new to the team gulped behind her faceplate. I don't know. Can't tell who's who. The captain looked at her and continued. Our mission is to save lives. That's how it's always been, and today is no exception. But you are all humans before, before you are rescue workers. As long as you survive, that means one more life saved. Keep that in mind as you commence the rescue operations. With that said, good luck to you all. Yes, ya, yeah, yata! With that shout, they rush into the facility. All having no idea what awaited them there. And thus, the dispatch will later come to be known as Serious Long Day. Serious, Serious is Long Day. It had begun. Form two man cells. Tabachi, you're with Morbi. Don't Dojima, you're with Hiami. Make sure to keep in constant contact with TB. Don't forget this. They all have the same conviction. To accomplish the mission, they've been handed whatever by whatever means necessary. However, what they thought what they found lurking far exceeded their imagination. Countless unexpected complications kept arising one after another. Morbi, there are still people in the basement. Oh, let's go, Lieutenant. Kasagi, get out of the basement ASAP! Hurry, there's no time! Roger that, we'll just wait right here. I can't get through to him. Huh? That's odd, did something happen to the captain? So far this has been a kinetic novel, I'm not having any choices, we'll see how it continues. So this is Area N, huh? Those two trapped just ahead, right? Right, so let's go. Don't go to Area N. It stands for no. Back then, we couldn't save anyone. The time to atone for this for that has finally come. Yep, white screen. But even then, even that determination can be crushed. Impossible. No one's here? Were we tricked? Why? By whom? God damn it. Why did this have to happen? Don't grieve. Now not the time for regrets. Our mission isn't over yet. A case N has just been detected. In accordance with emergency, security has shifted to normal mode, locking out all bulkheads leading to the surface. I'll go look for her. Are you serious? All by yourself? There's no other choice. I'll leave the rest to you guys. But I'm not back in 20 minutes. Go on without me. He swallowed his regret and ran. All in order to stick true to his convictions. Ha ha! Finally found you. You're a person of interest to this lab, right? 
Who? Who are you? I'm a rescue worker. I'm here to save you guys. Thus, he found a lone girl, and then. Will I make it? They should still be here. I'm sure they're just up ahead. Are they? He endured the pain and kept on walking. And then, at the end of his mission... Gah! Heart attack? He came face to face with a monster. What? Okay, this is kind of a turn. The monster took hold of his wrist. But he's not wearing the uh, suit. Ha. The monster looked at him and laughed. The man sp spotted a broken wristwatch out of the corner of his eye. At that moment, just as indescribable fear sent shivers in our spine. Huh? He was assaulted by intense pain akin to his brain being crushed. Ah! The man screamed, faced with agony unlike any he had felt before. He struggled to understand the source of his pain amidst the confusion, confusion engulfing him. That was my head. It can't be. No, not you too. His well-toned body provided helpless in the face of that power. You... You damn monster! In spite of that, he struggled against attempting to complete his mission. Nevertheless, uh, his will broke as overwhelming pain surged through his head once more. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, he staggered backwards, clutching his head. The monster's face warped sinisterly, its gaze piercing right through him. Ah! Uh, he then fled without looking back. He had stood his ground, he'd been killed, annihilated. And so he held his throbbing head and as he ran for his life. I have to get away as far as possible. He had to retreat to a place where the monster's power couldn't reach him. But it was all for naught. Random encounter? Everything in front of him flashed as he felt anything like that out of his head exploding. Ga ga! That was the last thing he felt. So his head did explode. And then if someone had flipped a switch, his consciousness faded into darkness. Dot, 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 dot. Eventually, far past that frozen time, awake a voice called to him, or perhaps it was merely a memory of such a voice. He heard that voice as he lay beneath the white-washed tomb. And then time began to move, but not in an animated way. I mean, that would have been more powerful than... Da, 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 da. His consciousness was in endless darkness, a world where everything was closed off. Sight, hearing, touch, smell, taste, he'd been disconnected from all his senses. Except for humor. It didn't feel like there was a world around for him to experience at all. Where am I? He didn't know. His head was a total blank. What is this? He didn't know. All he could sense was a feeling of loss. What's going on? It felt like he was lacking anything definite. How did this happen? He desperately tried to figure out why. Soon enough, Fragmented image twinkled into the corner of his mind. Ah, uh, I see. So that thing attacked me. Is this death? No. The sound of a beating heart echoed inside him. He knew for sure he could perceive that. This guy is... No, not this guy. I'm... Alive. Sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch, pain! I have all those senses. Pain's not really a sense. My body and consciousness are right here. I'm right here. Dot, 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 dot. Tain! Captain! Please hang in there! Captain! Get up, Captain! Come on! With the sound of their voices suddenly filling his ears, the man opened his eyes. Hello! Put your hazmat suits back on. You've kind of come too, haven't you? What a relief! I thought you were... thought you bit it there for a second. Huh? The man said nothing as the woman before him started addressing him. What the heck are you doing here, Captain? Shouldn't you be at the command post? More importantly, can you say your own name or what day and month it is today? What, huh? The man already felt confused in the face of the sudden storm of questions he'd been sucked into. He first tried to grasp the situ situation around him. The women in front of him were wearing orange uniforms. So they're firefighters, not rescue workers. 
Their uniforms were covered in soot. Disaster, action, and rescue. Vague images related to those words swirled around in the man's mind. Who are... Uh, no, where am I? Ah, I shouldn't sit up yet. The man ignored her warning sat up, then checking his surroundings. He was in some building he'd never seen before. He apparently had been lying in the middle of a hall. He could see the cold steel doors and fire hydrants lining the court. He glanced at the ceiling revealed air ducts, sprinklers, and so. And I collapsed. Ugh. A sharp headache hit the man at the moment, causing him to fall on the floor yet again. Are you okay? Are you in pain? No, no, I'm fine. Just then, the man realized he was wearing the same uniform as the women. Why am I wearing this thing? He felt a strange sense of discomfort, like he had no connection to himself. Why was he in this uniform? What am I? The man stood up as he shook his groggy head. His body also felt off. Almost like his body and his mind weren't properly linked. It kind of felt like this is my body or something. No sooner had he thought that cross... No sooner has that thought crossed the man's mind than it, the air suddenly... The air suddenly... Sh then did the air suddenly shake. <coughs> what? <laughs> what was that? The woman paid no heed to the man's confusion. Instead, exchanged, bl exchanged glances. <laughs> Another explosion. <laughs> Maybe a fire's broken out. Let's go, Lieutenant. <laughs> right, Captain. Please rest here. We'll handle this one by ourselves. <laughs> the woman who called Lieutenant broke off in a run alongside the other woman, who apparently her subordinate. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Hold on. Scared of being left alone and told the dark what was going on, the man followed the two. He called out to them and he started closing the distance. Wait up, you guys! Captain, I thought I asked you to rest. Nah, I think he looks okay. Give us a hand, alright? No, no, that's not it. I just want to ask you something. What was that noise? What's happening? Huh? What? What? You're talking about, Captain? You, said, you say you don't get what's going on? No, no, I don't. Women looked at each other for a brief second. You understand, you come along. Please keep close to us. The lieutenant broke off another run at those words, with the man hot on her trail. She then opened a door and then the hall. Sending intense heat surging out of it. What is this heat? A heat that a heat haze filled the area, distorting the visions of what was before them. Ugh, we need to put out this fire on the double. Yeah, we closed another explosion. The men passed through the open doorway. The man followed suit and ran through the hallway. Only to be greeted by Hellfire! <laughs> we should still have our masks on! And I shouldn't be wearing my hair down like this in a fire! The man froze in shock at the scene he was confronted with. But the woman quickly got to work without even a moment's hesitation. Get a hose ready! Roger! Whoa, whoa, out of the way, Captain. Whoa! The female rescue warrior pushed the man aside and pulled out a hose from the fire hydrant built in the nearby wall. She then passed the lieutenant who directed his nostril towards the flames. Commence water release! Roger, here it comes. A jet stream of water collided with the flames, which erupted into a large cloud of steam. Incredible, the fire's getting smaller and smaller by a second. And that's how firefighting works. The man st stared at the swiftly dying fire with stark amazement. Just then, he heard something else mixing with the sound of the flames of Everett, a faint sound. One... Is that a voice? He wondered if it was a mind playing tricks on him for a second. But as soon as he strained his ears, he he helped me. He definitely heard what sounded like a young girl's voice coming from the room in front of him. Oh, my God. Someone's in that room. The man's body started running as soon as he thought hit him, weaving his way through the gaps between the flames. The room, his door was crushed inwards due to the effect of the explosion. The man peeked to the room from the shadows of the broken door. I scoured the world of fire and smoke. Where is it? Where is that voice coming from? His hair was singed by the sparks bathing him, creating an awful stench that hung in the air. What's more, his eyes were tearing up thanks to the smoke irritating them. But he endured and focused on searching the room. Someone help me. Found her! Through the fire and flames, you can see the girl crushing on the desk in the room. Are you okay? The girl looked toward the man's voice with hope in her eyes. But the moment he gazed and met the man... Huh? Her face froze. Whoa, what's wrong with that look? Or coming confusion, he came to a halt. But at that moment, don't stop. Save her. He suddenly heard a voice. Huh? He didn't know whose voice it was. It sounded like it echoed from inside him. The moment he heard it, everything suddenly fell into place. He finally realized why he was here. That's right. I came here to save her. The moment he came to that realization, 
The, his previously divided body and nerves seemed finally to become one. The flames were closing in on the girl. The voice resounded yet again in his head. Go save her. And with that command giving him the final push he needed, the man lunged into the blazing flames. Random encounter! No. After chapter one, nine o'clock chapter, root double before the coming after days, extend edition. Senses, sympathy, tutorial. Pause your afternoon so early, but there are no choices in this world. It's a kinetic novel. Regardless, we need your power to link this world to the future. So that sense system, senses, sympathy system has been prepared in order to allow you to willing to influence the world. This tutorial is playing SSS to you, but before that, let's explain what it means by senses here. Senses refer to as impression, motion, sensation, the context, but simply is your assessment of how you feel about someone else. In other words, if their senses are high, you have a good impression of that person. But on the other hand, if their senses are low, that means you have a bad impression of that person. And that senses sympathy system ex exists to quantify your senses and reflect them on this world. Now that we're playing the world. Oh, jeez. Ju yuk a ma en sa wa ka na. In specific scenes, a graphic like this will show, will look like a magic seal appearing on the right hand corner of the screen. This is known as the Enneagram. An Enneagram is the kind of person I assess the category people in different nine different personality types. Each of these nine characters of the story has been categorized into nine types. Oh, jeez. Thus, nine characters have been distributed onto the nine points of the Enneagram. Graph similar radar charge plays top of the Enneagram. This is graph similar to in the senses. The shape of the graph corresponds to nine characters. Shape will change as you alter their senses. You can import senses of nine characters you wish to include protagonists in the sense. You may also set the senses you have for yourself. In such an instance, you determine whether or not you have confidence in your instincts and opinions. Eternally, you can determine how much, val how much you value yourself. Senses, sympathy system. Truly a system where you determine the protagonist's various sensations and senses each time. Your senses will be used to determine which scenario divergence you will travel down to fixed divergence points. A divergence point store automatically diverges in accordance with the level of your senses. You can simply you can simply input your senses whenever you want. You can only do that when section known as branches. When you arrive at a branch, enneagram will appear in the right corner. Please check the enneagram display or not to determine if you can input your senses. Allow us to explain detail through example. Let's play a demo scenario where your branch will actually control the system. First, please take a look at the next scene. The senses input as an appearance, so just play through the text like you normally would. This is really complicated. Why not just give us choices? In a certain boy's house, a TV and game console are sitting in a neat and tidy living room. Just then, a girl came down from the hallway and spoke in a clear voice. Hey, what are you doing? Huh, you're playing a game tutorial? Is it really important? I see, you must be really busy, huh? Um, actually, I want to talk about something. But this is a bad time, isn't it? The girl looked at you hopefully as she said that. Oh, I'm sorry. It looks like I'm just bothering you, so I'll ask you later. No, don't worry about it. It wasn't all that important. Okay, then, good luck with the game tutorial. The girl slumped her shoulders with disappointment. And she left the living room with a lonely, lonely step in her gait. Okay. This is an example of an occasion where your senses for that girl were low. Now let's play this scenario again with the goal of time to make the girl happy. There's a branch in this time you can put your senses. When you're at the branch, enter ground peanut right in the corner. Please increase your sense for the girl before it disappears. Press the V button. I don't know if there's a controller. Um, oh, just click it? All right, I'll use the mouse. I'll use the, the controller. When you click the senses by the screen, the sense input screens use the cursor to choose sense you'd like to change, bring up the knob directly from the senses. Click the decide button instead. No. You can only do a sense move once per branch. You cannot input them. If you change your mind after you decide, so please be careful. <sighs> hey, what you doing? Oh, you're playing a game tutorial. Max. Is it really important? I see, you must be really busy, huh? Um, actually I wanted to talk about something. But this is a bad time, isn't it? The girl let you hopefully as she said that. So you, huh? You'll listen? Really? Is that okay? Yay, thank you. Well, oops. If you write your wish on a short paper called Tan Sagaka, it'll be granted. This voice is so high pitched. So you, so I was thinking we need to make preparations for that right now. The girl starts talking happily about the bamboo trees that are set up in the Tanabata. Congratulations, you successfully raised the girl's favor. In this example, the girl had two different reactions, but there may be more depending on the situation. 
Also, there isn't always just one census targeted. There is ever more than one target you need to take into consideration. You have to reevaluate your census with individually. In these situations, you can put for more than one character, but the only ones whose census you can put are those who are involved in the next branch. You cannot alter the census for an unrelated character. There will occasionally be times census holds greater importance than usual. As such, there are three different census colors, each one corresponding to important of the upcoming branch. Oh, blue, 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 yellow, very important, big changes, red, grave danger, utmost important, death line for you, conclusion. This includes a tutorial here, change every situation, now then let's turn the world. Time starts, you sense it right away. Young girl with yellow, this thing can branch bring something to So you choose wrongly, death make change. Look over the situation. I don't know why. Hold on, I'll save you. Uh, I don't know why. Man screaming and about to rush in the flames, but interrupted by someone grabbing by the collar. Captain, you can't just run in blindly like that. But if we don't do something quickly, the girl will. I'll take care of it. Once he heard them say this, the man. No, leave this to me. Quickly gave this reply. But just as he's about to continue running, the blades in front of him flared up violently. Ah! Ah, oh, jeez. This is why I told you to rest. You just can get away if you can't walk straight. Those words spurred him on. I'll save her! The man ran to blazing room, his heart filled with determination. Gah! But he was halted the moment he made it inside. Searing waves of heat barred his path. The girl was only a short ways away, but crossing the distance would be difficult. Time. The moment he heard the voice right next to him. What are you doing, Captain? The woman's tried to ward him, fall into the room without even noticing. Oh, uh, well, I, um, before I could finish the sentence. Ah, God. He fell into. Felt intense on his head, and a second later, horrible stench filled his nose. My hair is on fire. That caused the man to fly into panic. Oh, wow, wow, crap, crap. Oh. The man apparently swatted his head to tense without the fire. Captain, why are you acting like a total greenhorn? The tent is something's wrong with the captain. I'm about to buy back to with the hose. The wind's voice echoed from outside the room, soon placed with the roar of a hose. Water filled the room like mess. The fire government had him go out, driving in desperation. <laughs> go away! Go away! All the, starts, all the thoughts of the different girl vanished from his mind. With no idea what he was doing, he tried to put the fire by directly bathing himself in the hose's water. But the moment he walked into Jeff Green's path, God, it was a sheer force knocking backwards. Man fell face up, back his head, and slamming onto the floor. God. His vision swiftly grew dark. <gasps> Captain! He heard someone's voice from far away. Captain, why did you... The voice quickly faded away. What the hell is this? Is this how it ends? Yes. How pathetic. And with that, he thought no more. Yay, we beat the game! This has been my speedrun for Root Double before Crime After Days Extended Edition. A bad end won the Reckless. The result of ignoring the female rescue worker's warning, you may be able to divert this fate by setting female female rescue worker's senses higher than the protagonist at the sense input just before the sending. Um, well, this is a visual novel slash kinetic novel that goes with this weird bar graph instead of just letting you choose. Um, I don't know about that. Um, It's kind of weird, to be honest. I would, I would probably. Huh. Uh, I would probably prefer if they would just give me the choice, but yeah, they went for something different on purpose. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not a big individual novel, so I can't really say this one's for me. Uh, the the decision to do that weird graphing choice thing doesn't make much sense to me. Um, I got one ending. 
Um, seems like there's a lot of content here. Um, yeah. There you go. Cheers. <laughs>